going to get to introduce our presenter. So, Sue, come on up. <laughs> Facebook page, I Pick Paint Colors, and was immediately intrigued because if there is one thing I do not like, it's picking paint colors. So kudos to her. Um, I started following her on Facebook and quickly became a fan. Her Friday Faves videos are an informative and entertaining. Her faves can include anything from nail polish colors to recommending the Con Air battery operated fabric defuzzer shaver. Yes, I now own it, and it does work. <laughs> um, her before and after photos are proof of how talented a designer she is and how impactful picking the right color is in any home. For 30 years, she has been designing for clients across the country, but we are lucky to have her here in Jacksonville. And even luckier, she is our guest speaker. Please welcome Pam Seth. When Sue called and asked me about this, I'm like, where is it again? And she said the neighborhood, and I'm like, I've already been in your neighborhood. And I have a few clients in here too, so I'm like, I love that neighborhood. So thank you for living here. <laughs> when I moved to Jacksonville, one of my first appointments was across the street, Coastal Oaks, and almost nothing was there. So it was a big gate with like, no fence or anything, anybody could walk in, but there was nothing here, and across the street there was almost nothing here. So I think this was 2009, is that right? My question to you is, how many people in this room have moved, ever? <laughs> okay. More than twice, hands up. Three times? Can anybody say more than 10? There are a few. I consider myself pretty young, but I have lived in 11 different, not places, but different spaces. So I understand what it's like to move. And all of us, I think, have in common, once we move someplace, what do we have to do? Kind of set up house. The couch goes here, the bed goes here. The mission behind my business is truly loving where you live. You mentioned my Facebook page, but truly always it's been about loving where you live. Well, we have four boys, two little dogs. If any of you do follow on Facebook, yeah. you know Ralph and Artie are uh, vet terriers and also part of my page as well. And then we added a wonderful, wonderful Carly to our family. Tommy got married our youngest last summer. So these are the people who I enjoy making a home for myself. And a lot of you have made homes for your family, and that's been very meaningful to me, and it's everything I believe in for making our homes a place we really want to land. A lot of people ask me, how did you get into this? They know my business is also called I Pick Paint Color, and in the Jacksonville area a lot, I'm known as, oh, that's that girl that picks paint. <laughs> when I was little, I loved color. Remember when you had those crayon boxes and it had a sharpener in them, and I was probably one of those weird people that would like take the crayons up, smell them, and I just loved all the different colors in the box. So truly, that is where I started coloring. Uh, my mother would say that when I met my boys, I would just give them a ton of white paper, and I'd be like, create. And now two of those guys are designers, and the two of the guys are Marines. So the nice mix in our family. But in high school, I took art classes. Uh, Loved taking art classes, and then when I went to college, I was a Bachelor of Fine Arts at University of Wisconsin, Eau Claire. I lived with uh, seven other girls, or eight of us in the house, and we had so much fun, we still always see each other. But when, when they left college, and they did houses of their own, they're like, Pam, yeah, come pick our paint, or come do my bookcase, or, and I would sit there and be like, picking paint is so easy. Like, why is everybody doing this? It's just, it's easy, and they're like, it's not easy. Someone encouraged me and said, we should do this. Like, we should. And I had two little kids at home, and I started taking appointments. And I would go to their house and I'd say, this is the color you should your wall. This is the color you should your living room. And I found it very easy. So that's what I enjoyed. And we moved from Minnesota to Wisconsin, and then Wisconsin to Florida in 2003. 
And one of my clients, I've been taking one of, one of my clients, wrote the newspaper about what I do. This girl picks paint, and she wrote safety times. And this woman calls me, this very little older lady, and she's my name is Judy, and I thought she was trying to sell the newspaper. <laughs> and I said, no, 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 thank you, no, I'm not interested. And she said, no, I'd like to follow you to a couple appointments. So I picked a new construction community like this, and I picked a um, residential, uh, already existing home. And she followed me around and said, just wait. And I didn't know any more than that. And it hit the newspaper, hit the front of the home section. And this article, I had Judy start to thank for absolutely Scott making my business go like crazy. And that was back 2005. Shortly after that, my husband got a job in Jacksonville. So we moved from Tampa, from Tampa over to Jacksonville. That article, uh, First Coast News, we started trying to, First Coast News wanted to talk to me, and so that led to, if you, and if you guys see, you know, the news, and you see the new set, that's what the kitchen used to look like before. Somebody pulled me into the conference room and said, I think you need your help with the set. So I worked on the set with those guys, that was after, and then that led to being on First Coast Living, um, where I did a month, uh, uh, monthly design segment on First Coast Living. Jacksonville has been, I've embraced it. For those of you who just moved here, uh, we just love living in Jacksonville and it's been great for my business as well. Let's start talking about design stuff and the difference that paint can make. So I thought I'd start out, before my tips, I thought I'd start out just showing you some before and afters. In my business page, a lot of my followers will say, I'd love to see the before and afters. It's always fun to see what it was and what it could be. Uh, this is the home close to me where they bought a one owner house. I think it was like just way old. And I'm like, if we clean it up and we you know, bring it back to its beauty, then we do the before and after like that. This is a community actually very close to here. Sometimes you move into a house and you're like, the other person picked paint colors and live in somebody else's house. This is a home near me. It was a very young couple that, and I'm a fan. I love English tutors. I think it's a beautiful home. I'm like, oh, I don't want to paint it. I don't want to paint it. I love it already. But she said, I really just want to make it our own. So I researched the daylights out of doing tutors and what they could be. I hope you like the before and the after because this was one of my first clients in Jacksonville. And it was a battleship gray, very depressing looking house. They bought it uh, uh, from a family homeowner. So, but then 10 years later, um, Tracy called me and said, you know what, I'm ready for a change. They had built on the back a little bit. So we went from that to then updating it fairly recently. I just went with some punch color door. It's always fun to do a fun door. This was very close to here too. Again, just a little tweak made it the new owner's home. Just changing the color family. And a lot of times in HOAs, and I know this community as well, you have to follow what they want you to do. So I always say, yes, we're gonna submit this, and if you want to tip off, don't tell anybody, don't tell anybody, then you just get right to what exactly you want them to do. A lot of times I get calls, I like, help people all over the country, because now you can do phone consults with technology today, the pictures are very clear to see. This homeowner, I think was in Alabama, and she said, I really wanna paint my cabinets, and she said, I'm going to change out the doors. And they just moved in. And she's like, I'm going to redo the backsplash as well. But I said, I don't want to do white cabinetry on this job. I want it to look like it was always there. If you saw this color, the splash, what that actually is, it looks like a very heavy, medium color. Um, but then I want it to look like custom cabinets. So sometimes somebody will move into a home like this, and they're like, I just need some personality to it. Even their floor eventually, we're painting cabinets. They were taking the area near um, the fireplace, we're putting stone on that, mounting the TV. So you can really take some of these homes that sometimes you feel are kind of builder-y and make them uh, your own. Every once in a while, I get somebody to say, okay, you know, the brown red that we had years ago, here's the thing, we are not going to paint the cabinets. How can you help me? Change the look of the room without painting the cabinets. So we'll do just the wall color. I, this one too is to get sold. So I need an all of her mass appeal color. I work for a lot of realtors as well. We need an overall color that will just not be too trendy. I'm gonna address trends. 
but still we'll leave the cabinets just look and obviously take a lot of stuff off the top of the cabinets but just changing paint color alone that is a can of paint nothing else and just by taking stuff down we've updated the look of the house and took out that heavy look so a lot of people ask me okay what is kind of now when you see it right now in we're 2023, and as you know, there are color trends. Back, I was showing you even the Tuscan feel, and then there's a modern farmhouse look, and then you know we stamp these things, the gray trends. There's all these kind of trendy things. Well, Pam was not. So, do I have a favorite? No, I don't. I do everything toward the look of your home, your home looks like, and so it's really important to look at the style of home you have. A lot of these are more traditional. The new trend is traditional. Traditional is back. I never thought it went anywhere anyway. <laughs> a neo-traditional sense where everything is a little more cleaned up, visually, a little more cleaned up, and more clean lines, streamlined, mixed with traditional lines and furnishings. The nice thing about that look is that it doesn't have a time stamp on it. A lot of times with trends, we're going to have fun with the trends, I always say, and I'm going to look at my note right now because I put in capital letters, just be cautious with trends. Have fun with it, but be careful not to put it in permanent design elements. I hate for you to then look at your house and, you know, I've had people call me before, oh my gosh, what did I do? I just put this entire, entire floor in. That's expensive, and you know a lot of these design decisions can be really expensive. Well, I usually err toward the classic because you kind of can't go wrong, but definitely from the, the trends, whether it's pillows, whether it's animal prints, um, you really have fun with it. My next subject is lighting. Uh, about a year ago, I did a video about lighting that I wanted to show people all these different light bulbs. Has anyone in this room been to buy light bulbs and had a struggle? <laughs> What's daylight? What's bright light? What's whatever? So, right? So I thought I would be smart to post a video about it. I got to Lowe's, I got to the uh, aisle, and I walked out and I grabbed a box and I grabbed another box and I grabbed another box and I set my camera up right there because I do them like on the spot. I've done them in Hobby Lobby. I've done them all over the place. I just set up my camera and I started talking about it and I'm like, I don't even know what this means. I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no idea what I'm talking about, and I thought I did. I get this guy, John, yes, I remember his name, because he was really nice to me. I don't know what this means. I wanted to show them countless. I wanted to show them this and that. And he's like, yeah, I know the daylight versus bright light versus whatever. Well, I figured it out with such frustration. I turned my camera on when I was frustrated and said, all right, here's the other guys. There's the warm light, which some people say, oh, is that too yellow? There's the 3,000 Kelvins, if anyone please nod your head and go, yes, I know what that is now. And then there's the 5,000 Kelvins that some homeowners think they're adding a brighter light. Oh, good, that's brighter light. But then to me, then there's like penitentiary light. We want this in our home. I remember being on a, uh, there's a remodel, it was a new construction. But I walked in and I'm like, oh my gosh, what is that? It is so purple in here. Why is it so purple? And she said, oh, my husband bought these energy savers. And it's just, you know, are they going to be okay? I'm going to have to shift my paint colors, like, you know, three families away just to balance the... And we said, you know, I know I didn't think it looked that good either. I was trying to... So there are ways to save energy and have good lighting. I work very close with a guy named Josh Stewart Lighting. And we always go back and forth. He likes 3,000. This is the, the learning point of the day. And I personally like 2700 because I like a little bit more. Is it time to update your light fixtures? Do you ever walk in your house and you're like, I like it, it's a light and it lights my house? Or are you like, no, I, I, I'd actually like a new light. And the good news is light fixtures have gone way down in price compared to what they used to be years ago. I get this a lot of like some realtors saying, we've got to take these uh, fixtures down, the ones on the left were going down. Uh, I think that the one on the top one was hanging right there. I'm like, let's just get an open lantern, something again, clean line, It'd be very easy to do. There's all different price ranges. It's not hard to do that. Boob lights. <laughs> Anyone know what boob lights are? <laughs> A 
lot of new buildings, they'll put them in. Again, it's a light, it's lighting house. But do we like these better? Or do we like a recessed can picture that's nice and clean and just is doing its job? So doing recessed lighting, once the light, the conduit is there, you can do recessed lighting and it's a much cleaner look. So we don't always have to do fixtures necessarily. It's just about cleaning up your light. Here is the chart. Aha! Warren, 2700, 3000. Now that one goes up to 6500. And that looks like something on a CSI. <laughs> Where were you the night of? The warmth in houses is really important. So I always tell Josh, if I was on paint, I'd be lighting in a second because the lighting of your home. If you ever go to a coffee shop and you're like, oh, I just need to stay a while. Why is that? It's just the coffee, there's the ambience. Furniture placement. Most of us have a pretty typical living area, whether you call it a living room now, whether you call it a great room. Some of us have fireplaces. I do not. Uh, I've lived in houses with fireplaces. Where do we put our TVs? The usually focal point is at our TV. I can get the TV with the fireplace. I love to do that because it's all on the focal point. Whether it's couch, whether it's two chairs, whether it's four chairs and a round table. How do I do my five, how do I do my furniture placement? I always do this. Even if you're single, living alone, set your furniture placement for conversation. That person comes in, where can I comfortably sit and talk to the person or set down a drink? That's your conversation. Well, oh, Pam, that's so obvious. Because sometimes we push the couch back in front of the big window, we push the chair here, we push the chair here, and I call that, and I don't think this is my term, I think I've stolen this from someone, screaming distance. <laughs> I don't want to sit and scream with the person. I want it to be kind of intimate, but I think we sometimes are scared to move that furniture forward. Sometimes you can create a hallway going behind your couch. Two chairs coming in, and it's more comfortable when you sit down. I used to do, in one of these houses I was just looking at, I kind of did a while you were out service. I, don't, I no longer do that, but I would come in, you'd go wherever for a couple hours, I would move everything around, I would leave you paint colors, I'd do everything. I would literally sit, I'm not sitting well, I'm sitting kind of my chair now, but I would literally sit every time I'd go up and I'd sit like this and I'd act like I was holding a drink. And I kind of look like a talking person, and I'd be like, yeah, yeah, that's it. That's where that's supposed to go. You gotta try it out. You gotta see how you're actually sitting in a room. This is a big one, I think, for this group, for this community, for this area. Incorporating the old with the new. How many people are not from Florida originally and moved down to Florida? How many people trashed all of your stuff and came down here blank camp? <laughs> wow, that's more than I thought because what I find is people are still bringing some pieces down and what do we do to incorporate those old pieces with the new? I was helping someone who said I have this collection of, it was white picture, pictures but it was also white, uh, almost statues, but it was a collection that looked very similar. So as you walk in the front door, there's an office to the left. And I'm like, let's take, that already had built-in shelves. I'm like, let's take that and display it all in a grouping, not piece by piece by piece in your house. It is more interesting to look at groupings than it is just things all over the place. I feel that way about, I feel that way about pictures. I feel that way about galleries. I feel that way because then you can stand and you can actually look at one thing rather than a picture of a kid, a picture of a kid, a picture of a kid. <laughs> Somebody told me once, do you, do you not like children or something? The way you. <laughs> I'm like, just pick your favorites and put them in a little spot, and you'll enjoy them better than just all of them. My oldest sister had been to Okinawa, lived in Okinawa for a while, and they brought back some really interesting artwork. And it was just like leaning against the wall, and she's like, I don't know what to do with this. And it was tempting to put these in all different areas, but there was just one big blank wall in her kind of great room area, and it had a taller ceiling. And I just haphazard, and this is, I know it's the art major in me, that's the more art person in me than in even design, but I just went like, do 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 hammer nails, hammer nails, hammer nails, and just very haphazard. Because I find that sometimes when you measure it out, and this is just me talking, when you measure it out, it kind of looks too planned. This just created this gallery wall that just had this 
really interesting artwork, you know, from when they lived overseas. And that created something that was interesting. Create these things that are, are fun to talk about and fun to have people, people look at. A client of mine had her husband's family's old furniture, and again incorporating old with new, she's like, I don't know what to do this. She actually had two or three pieces left like this, and they were all different. I'm like, Kristen, let's get it. I will create a new fabric, we'll have it recovered. I'm like, let's do some fun kind of good neutral animal print. But then she put it in, and this is like in an old guest room, and she ended up putting it in like her living room, I'm like so proud of it, and the other one's flanked on the other side of the buffet. So you can create with your old pieces. Um, I wish, on a personal note, Jacksonville right now with their fabric stores, come back, calico corners, come back, decorative fabrics. We are really in the bottom of the fabric stores right now. And I get asked that a lot. So maybe that couldn't be a question and answer right there. Because I'll tell you, it's kind of hard to find. And I, I have a person that works with me, but she's like, just do it online. I think the person has to feel it. I want to make sure, like, I like the thickness of it. I want to make sure I like the look of it. But recovering pieces that are meaningful creates a whole new life for them. In my living room, uh, uh, that chair has had four different lives. I think that's life three, but now it is that. And it is an expense, but that was an antique chair. I got it when I was first married, and it's meaningful to us, and it sits comfortably. You all probably have a chair in your house that sits comfortably. Those are worth doing something with. Here we go. <laughs> I, went, I went through this talk a couple times in my house, and I'm like, if there's one thing you go away with today, this is the subject. And this is free of charge. This is this doesn't cost you anything. We all have too much stuff. We do. Look at how many, if there's not more banks being built or car washes, storage units are at their capacity. <laughs> And they are stuck. And we moved from a house that we're raising the boys and we first moved to Jacksonville, I think it was about 3,000 square feet. We're now in a house of 1,100 square feet. Single garage, which is also my washer and dryer, <laughs> my, my luxurious laundry room. You kind of live where you want to live, sometimes you have to go smaller. We did that and went, okay. And that's why we move a couple times, as you all know in this room have to start to get rid of stuff. And the one I hear the most is this. But you know what I paid for that? <laughs> <laughs> but those draperies in the window, I paid like the price of a small car. Do you think I can sell them on Marketplace? <laughs> and the problem is nobody else wants them either. So it is truly that come to Jesus of we have to just face the fact that sometimes it's over, and that's hard. But I hug my clients through it. We're gonna get through this together. We have too much stuff on the counters. We have too much stuff. Oh, but I use that. Oh, but Pam, I use that. I use that toaster, and I use that coffee maker, and I use this, and I use like this, whatever. Now, I like to say this. I've said realtors now a couple of times. When you sold your house, how many people in this room have sold a house? Then you work with a realtor and the realtor said, put away some stuff, put away personal items, put away. So if you go, and I've done a number of videos about this, if you go in with that mentality, it doesn't mean you're putting all the way stuff and you can have some fun items. I'm, I'm not a whatever of fun. I'm fun. <laughs> Just you gotta do the bad stuff first and then you have fun. So we're not gonna fun until everything kind of you clean up your house, clean up your house like you're like it's a show, okay? And put that stuff away. Because it's an experiment in, for example, let's say it's a cardboard box. And you put the stuff in a cardboard box. Okay, live with that, live with without some of that stuff for a week. And tell me how much you miss that stuff in the box. You kind of don't. And all of a sudden you're like, or it's when I would get my house ready for a showing or something, I'm like, God, my house is better. I really like the look of my house. That looks really good. I've done videos. I've walked into Hobby Lobby. And I just scanned all the stuff, and the signs, and the words, and the knickknacks, and the stuff, and the scroll, and the looks, and the uh. It's too much, and people don't understand sometimes, 
I'm not really liking my house, so I'll go out and buy something to put on the table, and therefore I might like it better. But really, Nate Berkus is a designer with a great eye and, and aesthetic. Your best design tip is to clean up your house. We all tend to go, oh, I just shop for that and I add that, that's gonna make it better. But really, if you start taking away, and I say this word all the time, but bigger and less, you'll have an instant update to your house. Visual bang for your buck is what you're going for with a fair clutter and clean services. Let's say somebody calls you and says, hey, I'm gonna come over in a little while. Have coffee, glass of wine. Um, and you're going, well, my house isn't really ready yet. My most expensive tip of the day. <laughs> Mind you, I raised four little boys, so this is also the way to do it. I really did have a song, clean up, clean up, everybody everywhere, clean up, everywhere. everybody do their share. I say that to them now when they're 30, and they're like, oh my gosh, so seriously. <laughs> so you take this, and this is that little realtor tip I was saying. Everything goes in at one time. You're cleaning up literally with this. You're putting it in that side room that nobody sees, and you're shutting the door. But then it's easy to go and go, this goes here, this one goes in your room, this is the, that is my clean, that is my easiest tip ever. Everyone enjoy this laundry bag. I could have given them the store prices. <laughs> <laughs> Junk drawers. <clears throat> my goal last year was, because I have a very small kitchen, I'm like, what if I told you guys no junk drawers? Like, you can't not do a junk drawer. I'm like, I have a desk, my stuff goes in the desk, look what's in your junk for it. Could all those pieces go someplace? A little fun challenge. Yeah. And back in the do we need 75 nail polishes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stand up for yourself. <laughs> Lotions, moisturizer, but I might use that. When did you buy it? I, hey, I might use it. Why would I go to uh, we moved in a small house, and they're working in the kitchen, and I said, you guys, this is such a pass-through, getting back to the bedroom, I'm like, can you just make me some bookcases? And to who was doing it, he said, absolutely, that would be very easy. My splurge here, you can see the funny my cords, this is before I tucked in my cords, uh, was library lighting. I loved library. Oh, I love these library. I saw this dining room once, it was very small, very small house, but like the walls were library walls in a dining room. I thought that was really intimate, really cool. So just kind of a fun look, but you can use these dead spaces for something. This was a room that just didn't have anything in it. We're like, we're gonna cover chairs, we're gonna do that. I'm like, we could build a whole bookcase on that back wall and we have a window seat on the right side. And she just gave me a bunch of boxes full of books. My thing is, is I help a lot of younger clients too, and it's very interesting how these younger I uh, don't want to group them all, big stereotype, but I'll say, they'll say, oh, I saw your library uh, shelves. I really like the idea of library shelves. I still think you have, you have books. <laughs> I'm like, no, we don't. I'm like, it's hard to do a library look without the books. <laughs> We're like, we just do it on here. I'm like, I know, but I need some books. I was working on, if you guys know Tree Steakhouse in Jacksonville, so years ago, was, they wanted an update, and the girl pulled me in. So we had bookshelves in the front, and the girl I was working for said, I'll just order some online, and she ordered books, like fake books. <laughs> they, they looked like they were real, but I'm like, this is so weird that we're ordering fake books. I do want to look at So add character, some way to add character. Tip for bookcases, when you're styling them, how many people watch, uh, like during COVID, all the Zoom calls, and people's bookcases behind them? You know, I'm like, there's books shoved in, there was stuff all over, some people are trying to sell their book, you know. I'm like, oh, I just wanna to go to your house and just like style your books. First of all, pull your books forward. Pull your books forward, that's like the true library. And then also think of bigger and less. A lot of times in our homes we need um, storage. And that those baskets right there, just nice big texture can also hide things and add to the storage that we need in our houses. Well, I told her, I said, we're getting the same lights that I have remaining for you. Is that at night that's such a nice look when they're wet? Rugs, plants, mirrors. A lot of times, uh, what I'm saying the great room areas or the living room areas, an eight by ten is normally the size you need. 
Sometimes you're looking at rugs online or something, or maybe in a store, and you're like, I think we can get away with five by seven. But what happens sometimes, and sometimes it works. Uh, we have five by seven, we have the couch back here, like I was just saying about putting the legs on the front of the, front of the couch. Um, and it kind of looks like it's an island to itself, whereas a eight by 10 is gonna anchor you a little better. But sometimes nine by 12 is too big and you're putting the couch on it and that looks a little weird, like you're floating a raft on the river and everything's on the rug. <laughs> a lot of you have a great screened in porch area or lanai. Don't forget the rugs there. An indoor outdoor rug and they're making them so much better now, some of you probably have them. That really makes it look like an outdoor living area. That outdoor rug can anchor your outdoor furniture. Don't be afraid to break the rules. Oh, that lamp is for indoors. I can't put it outside. It's an indoor lamp. You're all protected. You know, there was one lamp I did this for in a few houses back. And I think it lasted for three years. And then I had to like change it up. You know, $40, I changed out the lamp. But the lamp outside, when you go and sit out, and so it wasn't coming just from the top of your head. Sometimes we light things from the top of our head, our shadows. I don't know about you, but I like the up light. It makes us all look a little younger compared to the light on top that shadows our whole faces. Sometimes I walk in the house and I'm like, something is missing. I feel like something is missing. What is it? There's no plants in here. There's no greenery. There's no life. Pam, I kill plants. Girl, me too. I am the same person. So you can have some fakes, but just make sure they look really, really real. But here's the tip to make you feel like you have real. I take beach grass type stuff is great because it kind of goes up and makes, you know, goes up into the room. We put pieces like that in a crop or something else, you don't always have to use pots. But if you mix it in with a little real, like ones that aren't don't die fast. <laughs> then you kind of feel like you have real. It also does not die fast. That pot is from Ikea. And in the corner, you have the look of life in the room. Spotlights made specifically for plants. I like them for just corners of the room. So, and now I make them kind of new thing. They're like 20 bucks a pair. I just got some on Amazon. And you put this little spot in the corner, the little spot in the corner. And then you can light something like, but and these lights are kind of expensive and stupid. They are, but they are. And you have the little remote to turn on and off, or it goes off on a timer. But your room lit like that at night, with just the corners lit, some lamps, and there's just little lamps, and really the accent lighting, like in the library shelves. It's a warm, inviting room that you want to hang out in. Mirrors. I am a mirror junkie because they solve so many issues and design. Um, like I said, we downsized and had to get rid of a lot of stuff. And the girl, young girl we bought the house from, had a few of these big mirrors that she couldn't take to her next place. I said, can we have those too? Like we broke them in or whatever. But at the end of the hallway, I could put this big chunky mirror that's almost the, the size of the end of the hallway. And in my kitchen, I took one and turned it sideways and over our eating area. Now my kitchen looked absolutely double the size in the eating area. And when we tiled that, I wanted to keep it very retro, kind of, you know, 1947, like the age of the house. I'm like, if we go tile up to here, I want this all to be glass. This whole thing, Lee and Kate's came in, did the glass, and then I put the sconces in the mirror. That alone made my bathroom just the typical little old bathroom that you see in those houses. That's what I have and it actually makes it go through to another room. I need one of them on our uh, library shelves, just so when you walk by, you see movement. Take them off the dresser, put it someplace else, but the mirrors can make things look bigger. And that is the end of my tips to love where you live. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. <laughs>
Well, and I'll ask you a question back. Is it something you really love that, that so because sometimes we have it and we just uh, put it away. Sometimes I like to display it. And you know, we've had China cabinets in the, in the past, whatever. But sometimes the feel I get is, I want to hang on to it, but I'm not displaying it. Now what do I do? You know, do we sell it? Is it worth anything? Kind of now, I know people that want to sell it. It's just not worth anything. I know. That's I know. a sad thing. It's kind of reality. I know. <laughs> and there is a thing I was going to even just jot in my notes that stuff guilt, we all have it. Stuff guilt, something has been given to us. or This is not the same thing as sentiment, sentimental things. There are absolutely sentimental things we've had in our family or, you know, my parents have given me that I just, you know, have because my parents aren't around anymore. So, but then there's stuff guilt that I hear my clients say, I don't like it, but I'm keeping it because. And I'm like, that's not a good reason. Love where you live. You know, my the thing I say over and over again, love where you live. And if you live with your favorites, when you move from 3,500 square feet to 1,100 square feet, you have to decide what the favorites. And some stuff I believe it just didn't fit. That's a question. But if you're saying, do you have panels on either side and you open and shut them? That's a great point. And the sliders are, and, and even like some things they offer now for sliders, they are so cost prohibitive. Like you can do them. You know, people have plantation shutters, but you, you know, treat them in a certain way. The thing is, you want to see it during the day. I will say it's interesting being from Illinois, being from originally from Minnesota, there's a, people are kind of big fans of even just open windows, like just keeping the windows windows. I came down here and I think in Jacksonville there is an Atlanta influence which I've learned is a little more decorated. Um, so I, when I first moved down here almost 20 years ago, I'm like, oh my gosh, people really do, like draperies and drapery panels and stuff. And now I see, though, there is a nice softness to a corner, and I'm not talking pattern here. I mean like texture, like linen. Just to have the corners treated, it's not even that you're, because you just said you have privacy. When somebody has privacy out back, you don't need them for privacy. But if you're just in the corners, you're still opening the slider, the window somehow somehow looks finished. And I am a fan of that. And you can still do a clean line traditional with just a clean rod. The rings, I think, hang nicely. But just really simple. Sometimes, like, lately I'm doing the color of the wall. So if I do kind of oatmeal color on the wall, I'll do an oatmeal panel. But somehow the window looks finished. It's, it's a great point because those sliders can be, there's not many options for them. Yes? question no be free no <laughs> make sure that the groupings though kind of make sense i was just in Denver this past week and visiting our oldest son and we stayed in this old place which sue said she used to work at years ago it was so funny um and i was like this is like art deco meets down it was just it was like a cool mix and some of the frames black some of the frames gold you know, and then if there's a theme running through, you should have one theme running through it. So, for example, my grandparents' pictures. I have some of those original pictures. So in a guest room, I keep those grouped. And then I reframed two things to look old also. Some of them are bronze, some of them are kind of silver, dirty. You know, some of them are in black work with it. But make sure it's a grouping of what makes sense together. To me, black and gold works together. Is there a link? So 
So, that is not a one size fits all at all. I had to go to the house because the fixture itself was very open and I knew if they followed the 32 inches above the table or 33, whatever, all your heights, your ceilings are different. All the fixtures are different. You, you can't answer that for one. So I do stand there and I'm like, look. And so the really nice light fixture guys on that job were just like, I said, can we just do it where you give me a little extra room? And we literally did one more link, two more links. So it's not a tried and true, but you always have to do this too. Here's the other thing. I don't think this, this is my pocket. Is sit down at the table and then look at a actual real person. You're always, most people are a little too high. You should come down just a little bit more. Because we, we hang our lights like this. We're standing around. At the dining room table, we're sitting. But make sure you're going to put something high on the table, like, you know, four more inches or something. Yes? Yeah. I have some chairs. Um, 
there's a certain gray that to me is what I call cell block age gray. And I just, I, I couldn't do it, but um, have I seen some grays work beautifully? Yes, but it's, it's, the thing is we're going into 2023. And the height of it for me, the color forecast is 2013. That's 10 years now. Ceilings, white or color? I'm kind of a ceiling white. white. I'm kind of a ceiling white person. Just because it pops my paint color, like if I do a certain off shade on the wall, I want to see it look against that. Plus most trims down here are white, in different forms of white. So I like the white trim to go with the ceiling. And all ceilings should be flat. The painter doesn't know that. It should always be flat. Um, because sheens are a big deal. You know, what kind of sheen do you like? And it depends. If it's a darker color, I don't want to see sheen in it. If it's lighter color, just a nice eggshell finish. Duration is the paint, but uh, matte. It's at least wipeable for grandkids, kids, pets. Uh, but I love the look of flat. I just sometimes don't like how it wears. If you want to put a panel on the window, just the panel on one side instead of two sides, do you still use I'm a full rod person. That's controversial, yes. Yeah. Okay, here's another. Many of us think this ballroom is outdated. And I was just wondering where you would start. Can I start on the ceiling, the walls, the floor? All the above. I'm incriminated. I think it's lovely. got to start someplace and I always say my job is really that's why I'm a paint picker I, my job is really the bones of the project you know I showed you some bookcases I showed you some decorating tips that you could do this after some of them you can do this afternoon but I really my thrill for my job is the bones of the project and that's to me the flooring the paint you can change so much with that so you know, doing a beautiful textured carpet. I've done a lot of commercial jobs where I picture it in churches. I mean, I've done all kinds of high traffic areas and just texture, you guys. I said a number of times, the word texture is not going anywhere, it's in. So let's say a textured carpet, harder and Berber sizeable look can really be hard wearing for groups. Like getting rid of the full finished look. I would start exploring some off. Yeah. I think this is the last question. <laughs> So, Pam, yeah.